breaking things. <laughs> so yeah, these are my things. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca. I'm currently studying cybersecurity and information systems. I'm a senior right now, so I'll be done this December, which I'm so freaking excited about. And I've mentioned this in a couple other videos, but I'm also a content creator. So I am not talking about YouTube, although I do like to make YouTube videos, but I do actually get to make money by making videos for other people, and I really wanted to share my journey into the field. So I'm not sure how much I still have up. I think I made most of my videos private, but I used to make videos when I was a sophomore in high school, but they're embarrassing. Hopefully one day I want to like react to them and see what I was doing with my iPhone 5 back in the day. <laughs> I stopped pretty shortly after because I was embarrassed of my YouTube channel, I think, and I just kind of cared too much about what other people thought. So when I was in college, I was like, who cares? Like, let's just do it again. I loved making videos. I don't know why I ever stopped making videos. So here I am. And then a couple years later, I finally got the opportunity to shoot a house. I had the opportunity to shoot some events and it's just been a really, really cool experience all over. Now I get to make content for YouTube and Instagram for other people. If you would have told me a few years back that I would be making money <laughs> from making videos, I would have never believed you. So hopefully this will help somebody that's looking to get into the field of content creation get started or just give you a little bit more context as to what's going on, what I'm using, what is any of this. <laughs> Um, these are all of the things that have helped me get where I am today. This is the Canon G7X and this is the Mark II. I still use this camera a lot, but for some reason now that I have my new cameras, I feel like guilty for not using them. This is an amazing camera for anybody, honestly. I would say even if you just want to capture family memories, I would get this camera. You can actually shoot in manual on this camera, adjust ISO and things like that, which a lot of like digital cameras don't have. Or maybe they do now and I'm just like outdated as to like what I think of a digital camera, but it's really great quality. It's super, super light. It's so easy to carry around. I love the viewfinder that flips all the way over. So this is the very first camera I got, but I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace from another YouTuber actually, and it served me well. One thing that I will say about camera equipment is that I don't think you should buy it new. Like maybe lenses, I can understand it if you're like really gonna make sure there's no scratches or anything, but most of the time, it's okay to buy things used. I think it's a more sustainable way for us to like handle our technology anyways. You don't need to buy a brand new camera every single time or like a brand new tripod, whatever it may be. Like it's okay to buy things used, especially if you're getting started and you don't know if you wanna commit to it yet just buy used things. The next camera I got is the Sony a6400 and this was my first like big girl camera or like more so big girl camera I'd say. It came with a zoom lens 18 to 135 millimeters and it shoots in 4k. It has a variable aperture from 3.5 to 5.6 which I do not like at all. Cool thing about this Sony is that it actually also has a viewfinder that comes all the way up which for YouTube is amazing because again most of the time when you're shooting a YouTube video, you'll be doing it alone or if you are shooting somebody, sometimes it can help for them to see themselves. I do still use the zoom lens. I just haven't bought a new one yet because they are like pretty pricey, especially ones that have like a good aperture range. This is the first camera that I used to like make a video for a client, which is so freaking cool. I still like can't even believe. This is an awesome camera. If you aren't ready to ditch out like a ton of money, but you do have a little bit to invest, um, I would highly, highly recommend this camera. Or honestly, even just for professional use, this is a great camera. People create amazing things with this. I just wanna stress this over and over again is that you can create amazing content from your iPhone. Like you don't need anything special to make good content. Make sure that you're also using what you have is all I'm gonna say there. <laughs> The one thing that I did not like about this camera is that it is not a full frame camera. So anytime you put a lens on it, it basically like doubles the focal length. Is that how you would explain it? The camera that I'm shooting on right now is a full frame. So a 35 millimeter is a 35 millimeter. But if I were to take the lens I'm using right now 
and put it on this camera, it'd be more so like a 50 millimeter. So it just depends on what you're looking for and if you're okay with having to like do that math every single time you pick out a lens. This is a pretty cool camera. <laughs> Um, I did buy a new camera and I was thinking about selling this one, but I love this camera so much. It's so useful and if I am shooting for a client, I want to be able to offer a two camera setup. So I am still keeping this. This is something else that I will have for a while. She's a, she's a good one. I'll make sure to add some clips of it as well in here, but I'm shooting on a Sony a7R 2 and it is a great, 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 beautiful, beautiful, beautiful camera. <laughs> Compared to the Sony a6400, it has double the amount of pixels, it is a full frame lens, and it does have stabilization in the body, which is huge. The lens that comes with the Sony a6400 has some stabilization, but it literally does nothing. Like if I walk with that camera versus if I walk with the Sony a7R, you will see a huge difference in the quality and just how steady uh, the footage is. That is another huge reason why I decided to get this camera. Also, this camera just offers a lot more flexibility um, in the settings. There's just a lot more you can do. I do want to actually get like really, really good, like real, real good at content creation. So this was my first big, big girl camera. I love it so, so much. And yeah, those are the three cameras that I have and I use pretty much the last two of those for work on a regular basis. The next couple of things are going to be the accessories that I use pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to interacting with all my equipment or just getting all of the content to my camera. I will insert a clip of this as well, but I'm using a Manfrotto tripod. I forgot the exact name of it, but it is such a good tripod if you are looking for a sturdy and flexible but not too heavy tripod. Manfrotto obviously kills the game with everything they create, but that is the tripod I have. It has a a fast release plate, quick release plate, I have no idea what you call that. Also from Manfrotto, I have the small pixie tripod that I normally would use with my vlog camera, but I also definitely use this on my big cameras as well. Again, Manfrotto is quality camera equipment. It's pretty sturdy and pretty reliable for just about all of my cameras, even when I'm using a really heavy lens. Aside from that, I'm using a simple Rode plug-in mic that is sitting on top of my camera right now, so I'll add a video in of it but it is extremely helpful for audio purposes, especially if you can't like use a lav. I did also have a lav, but I did break it. <laughs> so unfortunately I don't have that with me at the moment, but um, a Rode mic is something that I have because you will notice that audio is a big part of what makes a video good. Of course I have SD cards, um, could do nothing without them. I have two 64s and a 128, which is honestly more than enough. Make sure that you practice good data management, organize your files, and then delete them when you're done. To get those SD cards to my computer, I have two adapters because I'm normally reading from two different SD cards at the same time. I have the basic uh, USB-C to SD card reader from Apple, and then I also have one from Amazon. I don't think they sell this anymore, but it's just a basic like side dock for a MacBook Pro. It has a slot for an SD card, a micro SD card, a USB slot, and then another USB-C slot. I also have this adapter. It is HDMI to micro HDMI, not mini micro. I accidentally ordered the wrong cable. And what this does is it allows me to plug this into my camera and then display whatever is on my camera on a monitor or TV screen in my case. It's extremely helpful because most of the time I am filming alone. So this allows me to have a little bit more of an idea as to what's happening on my camera. I have hard drives galore and I have a story to tell with these. Lacey is pretty much my favorite brand. Um, it's what I use most of the time. The rugged Lacey hard drives are my favorite. Getting the hard drives with the extra rubber production is worth it because trust me, you will drop your hard drive. This was the first hard drive I've ever had and I think I've officially broke it. Very, very sad. I definitely have dropped this guy a couple of times and it gave up on me. <laughs> but if I was this hard drive, I would also give up on me because of how many times I've dropped this. So I'm still considering whether or not I want to go get the data recovered. I kind of want to try and figure out how to do it myself. I don't know if I need like crazy special equipment, but I kind of want to figure out how to do it. That is my one sad story. Make sure that you have a backup of your backup and make sure that if you do get a hard drive, get something that has a little bit of protection. All of the hard drives that I have have moving parts, unfortunately, so ultimately they will break one day. One thing you can do if you want to add a little bit of extra protection to your data is you could get solid state 
it's not uh, invincible, but it is a little bit more resistant to drops if you are a clumsy person or drop things like me. <laughs> the last thing that I do have is a grip on the bottom of my Sony, which again, you should have seen in the video. I'll add another clip right now just in case you are curious. Uh, what it does is it gives me two batteries instead of one, which is extremely helpful, especially when you're filming video, because it does drain your camera's battery a lot. It allows you to have, again, just a better grip on your camera and hold your camera in different orientations. So it's just extremely helpful if you're shooting vertical instead of horizontal, that way you're not holding the camera awkwardly. To hold all of these fun things together, I finally did buy a little backpack. I was going to get one from Manfrotto, but I felt like I was just buying it because it was a cool brand and I didn't really need it. So so I convinced myself to buy this basic backpack camera from Best Buy. I think it was like $40. It's pretty spacious. It is kind of small. I'm realizing now that I did decide to keep my other camera that I may need more space. Um, but it's really, really nice. It has a lot of compartments, pockets. Um, it's, it's done me well so far. Here's the fun one. <laughs> this was my first gimbal. <laughs> so this is the Zihun, Zihun, I really don't know how to say it, uh, crane. I think this is the first one. But this is a pretty cool crane. This is the one that I would always use when I would uh, shoot a house or shoot something where I would be walking, obviously, anywhere where I would need more stabilization. This is the gimbal that I would use to shoot houses when I was first getting started with my 6400 or a6400 um, it sits like this it holds the camera and then there's some simple controls um, over here I do believe that there was a way to connect it to your phone this was a really nice gimbal except um, it can't hold that much weight I don't think or maybe I've just been using it terribly wrong um, when I got my new camera or when I got my new lens my 35 millimeter it was a lot for the gimbal to handle or for me to even hold comfortably so I am actually going to be selling this gimbal because I just don't think I need it anymore. These cases are always so intense. So I traded in that box for an even bigger box. I got the Ronin S from DJI, which is such a good gimbal. Honestly, such a good gimbal. It is heavier, but um, it's, it's, it's just so nice, honestly. It's just a great camera. Um, there's tons of tutorials that'll show you some of the cool things that you can do with this, and I'm so excited to use this more. I've only used it to shoot an event so far. I haven't really done too much with it yet. This can hold a lot of weight, and it definitely can hold much more than I even have the like potential to make with the camera equipment I have right now. This is definitely a bit more pricey. There are also like handheld gimbals that you can get that aren't motorized and still do a really great job. Yeah, I just upgraded and got a big... A big girl gimbal because I could not hold a camera still if my life depended on it. <laughs> I have a little uh, Tello lens. This is not a lens. This is a drone. I have a little Tello drone. This was like $100 at Apple. I wouldn't say I use this for clients or anything, but it is fun to use for like personal videos. It only shoots in 720p, so I am looking to get a real drone very, very soon. I'm hoping to get the Mavic Air by DJI because DJI does it best, but I feel like I should wait for some reason. Something's telling me to wait. I hope this video helped you guys out just a little bit with understanding the possible equipment that you could get or maybe get an idea of what you want to look into. If you are looking into content creation, make sure to network like crazy. Make sure to strive for progress and not perfection. As a content creator, it's really hard to not judge your own work so much and just put yourself down because it's intimidating to let other people see the stuff that you make. We're normally all our own worst critics, so just be confident in your work, be confident in the gifts that you have, and yeah, go make some awesome content. I'll definitely be making more videos on the topic, just more about how I network in the field and just kind of how I've got this whole ball rolling in content creation itself. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Until next time, bye.